Well, good morning, everybody. Um, for this week, I thought I'd take you through a little walkthrough of uh, some work I have to do. Um, we're going to be bringing our new circuit over to Cerner live today. Uh, no, not today. Tomorrow morning. Um, so one thing I have to do in preparation for that is break up this firewall pair that we have that goes to our existing circuit, um, which is up here. So we have an existing circuit to Cerner and the backup right here in the same rack and in the same location. So not good. We're going to change that. So first things first, I have to take this firewall here, the lower one, which is our secondary. Um, you can see it's got this orange light lit here. Here, here, here. It's, um, which means it's, it's in a high availability pair and it's not the active pier. So we're going to take it from this rack here in the back and we are going to move it to this rack. And we're going to end up putting it right here in this, uh, this empty hole. It's going to go right here, right next to the Cerner equipment. So uh, i got to shut down the firewall first. And the way we do that, this is going to be hard to show because I'm doing this on my phone. But basically, we've got a web interface going to it. I've already checked. There's no traffic going through it. I've verified that this is the correct firewall. So we're just going to go over here and click this little... Um, where is it? There it is. It says shut down device right there. We're going to go ahead and click that. Um, shut it down. And uh, then we can move it. So uh, I'm going to put you on ignore for just a minute uh, while I shut that firewall down. Okay, so we've shut it down. I've removed the, uh, the networking cables from it. The cables we have... Um, we have a cable that goes in, a cable that goes out, a cable that goes in, a cable that goes out. The way we run these firewalls is um, it's called a B-wire technology. So basically, it's not acting as a router. It's just acting as basically a, a tap. It's, it's in line, and it's just um, examining the traffic that goes through, looking for viruses, malware, that sort of thing. It doesn't do any sort of routing thing. Um, the uh, company that I studied some security from, uh, Tipping Point, used to call it a bump in a wire. So that's all it is, just a bump in the wire, otherwise the box doesn't, doesn't do anything other than just examine traffic. So we removed those. These two green cables here are the heartbeats. Um, one's the heartbeat where it monitors the other device, and the other one just uh, maintains session information when they fail over. And then the last cable I removed right here was the uh, management interface um, that goes to uh, our management VLAN. So it's all decabled. I just need to go around and unplug the power, and then I'll come back here and attempt to remove those screws, which are deep inside this cable management. Uh, hard to see. And there we go. They're tucked back in there, so. I'm going to have to get an extension on, uh, on my drill because I don't think that's going to be long enough. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll pick this up once I've got it out. Be right back. Okay, we got the firewall out. I ended up having to use my super long extension to get it out. Um, one thing I'll have to do is uh, you can see we've got the mounting ears right here. They're, they're set up, they're put on backwards. Here's the front. And these are put on backwards so that we could mount this in a two-post rack. Um, this is going to go into a four-post rack now, so I have to turn these around, put them on the, uh, excuse me, on the other side so that uh, it can mount flush with the front of the rack, just like the other equipment. So we'll be right back once I have done that. All right, we got the uh, ears moved. You can see they are now on the front of the device. Uh, I did use a drill motor to take the screws out, but not to put them back in. I used one of these because that's an impact drill. And if you let it put them on, it could either strip the, the uh, heads out or uh, you'll never get it out again. So, 
Don't want to use an impact drill to put screws in. All right, now I'm going to mount this thing, and uh, then we'll start cabling it up. Be right back. Before I screw this thing in, I want to let you on a little trick I've learned over the years when it comes to mounting equipment. Um, so right now it's just, uh, where is it? There it is. It's just sitting on this cable management right now. And it's hard to tell, but the bottom is actually kind of rocked forward a little bit. The top is kind of up against the, the uh, mounting rail pretty tight. What I always do is I screw in these bottom two screws on both sides. Because when you do that, it pulls the device in and it makes it a lot easier to put the top screws on. Um, once you've pulled the, uh, the bottom in, the top's really easy to line up. So take that for what it's worth. All right, I'm going to get to it. All right, just a quick pause to show you what I mean. So I put the bottom two screws in. Uh, there it is. See the bottom two screws. Um, and then it's got this already held up nice and tight with the rest of the rack. So when you're mounting equipment out there, have your buddy. And you, most of the time this stuff's fairly heavy, you can't mount it alone. Some of the light stuff you can. Just hold the back up until you can get the bottom two screws in. Bottom two. Put those in first, and then the top two will go in super easy. Okay, I'm going to do the top two now. Pause. Okay, now that it's mounted, I've got to pick some ports on this switch and do some tagging. Um, that's going to be a little harder to show you in this video, um, but I'll use my phone and I'll try to take pictures of the screen, um, either just before or just after, because I need both hands to type, sorry. And uh, yeah, so we'll get those, we're going to have to get the two, uh, these are the two data, data ports we're going to have to get set up. And then we're also going to have to uh, find ports on this switch for the uh, high availability connections. And then lastly, the management. Actually, firstly, the management. And then uh, we'll get the HA ports hooked up. And then finally, the data ports. That's the order I'm going to do it in. Get management going first, then high availability, then the data ports. And then this guy is actually just going to sit idle until uh, we're ready to actually move the circuit, which is going to be tomorrow morning at 3 a.m. So, all right, let me, uh, let me go do some research and get some ports assigned, and uh, we'll be back with you. Okay, so I've tagged and labeled the ports for... Um, that's a lot of glare there, sorry. Uh, tagged and labeled the ports, and it's all backwards. Anyway, hopefully it's not. Okay, so anyway, I have tagged and labeled the ports that I'm going to use for the high availability. Um, I'll go ahead and plug those in. I'm going to do the same for the management port. And uh, then I'll plug that in and power the device up. And I'll come back to you at that point. We'll see how we're doing. All right, we got it plugged in. I had a constant ping going. The ping is finally answering, so... We got our tagging right, we got our cables plugged in right. So, I like using these slim run cables by the way. They're very thin, they make for much less mess, as you can see. You can get a whole bunch of them in one area and uh, not use a whole lot of space. So, we've got our management, we've got our HA2 and HA1 plugged in. So, now I'm going to pull up the firewall. These take a long time to boot up. So I'm going to, um, even though it's answering a ping, as you can see there, it uh, doesn't mean the system's up and running yet. So they're Linux systems and, you know, Linux. Come on, no, no angry comments. I love Linux. Linux is, is an operating system after my own heart. But, but when they have it stripped down and running on this, this really, this uh, system here, it, just, it takes a while. So anyway, uh, we'll be right back again. Okay, that is all done. So, I got these all plugged in, HA and management and all that. And it's coming up, everything looks good. Well, almost everything. What didn't look good is the HA links didn't come up. They were showing it down. Scott scratching his head. Well, did Scott remember to hook in the HA links on the 
Availability pair? No, he did not. So, these, these were um, some direct links we had going between the two. And uh, I had to run these links over here to our old switch that we're replacing, which that doesn't matter because we'll be moving this other firewall tomorrow. So I put in a couple of, uh, I tagged a couple of ports in the right HAV lands there, extended that back up to our core, and uh, now everything seems to be talking okay. As you can see, let me turn it around here so you can see. Um, where's my finger? There it is. So this is the HA monitoring here. And you can see that, uh, look on that glare, that it's uh, this one I'm looking at is in passive mode, which is what I want. And everything else is in the green. Everything is synchronized. Everything is good. Um, the only thing I don't want to do right now is failover because um, we don't have anything connected here yet. So we'll have to do that. I'm going to do that uh, after I go get some labels. I want to label everything I've done. Um, and then I'll run the final few cables. But uh, yeah, that's, that's about all that's, uh, all that's involved in uh, moving a firewall over. Um, this takes a little planning and uh, getting the VLANs in the right place. So in any way, I hope you found that informative or entertaining or neither one or both. Um, if you do like what you saw, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell if you so desire. And uh, otherwise, oh, and I'm so sorry, I forgot to tell you, grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in California Central Valley. And with that, I will say God bless everybody, and we'll catch you next time.